Hello there YouTube, this is Sybils and Bits back at it again. Today we're actually going to be playing Reyes 2, sequel to Reyes, a god game from um, Abbey Games, who also made Renowned Explorers, which is one of my top 10 favorite roguelikes of all time. Um, Reyes 2 is a little bit less of a god game than Reyes 1, as far as I am con as I know. And it's a little bit more of just a strict puzzle in dealing with random situations kind of game. There's a whole bunch of uh, stuff on the roadmap that might make it a little bit closer to a god game like Reyes is. But as far as I know, this is basically just a world building rogue roguelike of sorts. Not really a roguelike, but you get random drafts and then you have to try and build the best civilization out of that. So... Definitely a puzzle game. I don't know. I'm probably not doing it justice. But um, I spent the last week playing this game and spreadsheeting the ever-living shit out of it. Um, I basically have a calculator that can determine the outputs and levels of starting like towns. Like within the prehistoric age. Stuff like that. And now I'm going to start working backwards to... For if I have this tier 3 tech at the start of the game, what's the best way to set that up? Uh, because that's where I get my dopamine, is by basically spreadsheeting games. And it makes them last a little bit longer for me because I have to spend hours uh, putting in information. Anyways, while I enjoy playing this game and would like to try it out on the channel, possibly just doing the weekly challenge... Uh, every weekend it is also up to a two hour long game for me and honestly as a spectacle it's not really a good game because technically speaking nothing's really happening so I'm going to try and keep my banter up to keep it interesting I'm probably going to have to edit this afterwards and we'll see how it goes. If it goes well, then I'll keep making videos. If not, well, I guess I'll find something else. Anyways, we're going to play a daily challenge. And we'll also explain, like, exactly what the heck Reyes is here. This is just the challenge rules. We're going to be forced to go into Age of Horror. That requires money and generally herbivores. And we are starting with potatoes. We got sea turtles and white sharks. I don't think that's very good for us. I mean, I'll take them. Can't be that bad. It's just going to be very hard for us to actually build the ocean biome. What with uh, these taking up our upgrade slots. And that's just a thing that happens in challenge mode. Probably should have shown like an actual match. But I have been trying to do these dailies every day. And there's no way that I'm going to be able to do a match and the daily. And get to bed on time. Uh, this actually might even come out tomorrow. Not on Tuesday, but on Wednesday. But... It's the future now, and so that's irrelevant to you guys. So, in Reyes, we have three and a half eras, uh, or like ages. We start in the prehistoric era, and so we have 30 Aeon to spend. We have like time control stuff over here, we can pause and all that, but there is no time pressure in Reyes because Aeon is what calculates what we can and cannot do almost every single unit landmark whatever you want to call it that you place the game calls it bioticum uh, that is going to cost you five aeon we can go to the shop to buy more aeon to place more stuff but generally speaking you get six to go in this era but every time that you create a city there's also an increase so it's not necessarily the case um we're gonna make a forest for the botanist then again we do have taiga available with blue beads yeah we'll go ahead give him a nice mountain 
We have three giants here, which signify they are the vessels for which we manipulate the landscape. You're always going to have a plant-based giant. In this case, we have a forest giant. You're going to have an animal-based giant. In this case, the ocean crab. And you're going to have a mineral-based giant. In this case, the frost giant. And they determine which biomes that you can place at the start of the game. Uh, after the first age, when we spend our 30 Aeon up here, then we are going to be able to use their secondary biome. Of course, they have access to create ocean, but we already have ocean, and they have access to create forest, but they already have forest. So we're really only gaining uh, rainforest here, but I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, that just shows what we have access to us. They also have other options we're going to talk about later. So, when you start the game, you get to choose who is the spirit of the planet or your main leader, and that determines what bonus you have. So since the game, the challenge, has chosen botanist for us, all plants gain plus 15% food and science per distinct tag on it. So the more complex trees that we can place, the better. But all in all, plants are good for us, and uh, that's pretty good. And then each leader, as I'm going to call it, has specific requirements that they want done for their cities. We can choose to help them. We can choose not to help them and further other goals. But uh, generally speaking, it is a good idea to appease them, especially in the prehistoric age, because it gives us access to a nomad charge, which allows us to settle a new city, which is more people who can become prosperous. In this game, we are judged by how much prosperity or this green stuff that we have. How well are we developing our people? Again, that doesn't necessarily have to meet their needs. It's just overall, any time that uh, anybody gains enough food to gain a population, science to invent a technology, or technically just gain technology, and then eventually they'll invent a technology, we'll get to that, uh, or gold to accrue wealth, that increases the prosperity of that town and the planet has prosperity according to all cities that we have. So more cities means more people that we can appease. So that's how we get a high score. Now, there is a way to get more than three cities, which is the baseline that they expect you to have during the prehistoric era. And um, I haven't quite determined if that's the best move or not. Like, I believe some setups, you might want a fourth city, but uh, five cities gets a little bit cramped. We have methods uh, to uh, alter that later. All right, so we have our city center, Lushboro, and this dashed line here represents their current borders. They'll take two on either side, and... When they have borders, you will see that there are these, what they call boosters, on the floor sometimes. This is a food booster, so it will improve the food output of whatever is placed here by 50%. Which is additive with, uh, let's go back here, any of this stuff. You add flat base amount, and then you multiply it. And that's how you get good scores. So... Since he wants population and technology, and we have access to that there, I believe... We're probably going to want to put potatoes there, but potatoes cost three of whatever the heck this is. The flowers. This is referred to as biodiversity. This biome, anytime that we plant something new here, we get biodiversity. If we're trying to set up for potato, then we want um, adjacent undergrowth, which this place is good for, and especially the tech that we unlocked. So we can plant blueberry. Yeah, we'll do that. It has to be three spaces away, but I have a plan. Because one of these plants is going to be a fir, which has the lost tag, which is just a complicated thing that taiga has 
and it makes this count as an extra space. So, one, two, three. So it's three patches away. And we have now completed our first level request. And so we have access to a project. We already know that we're going to stack undergrowth. The question is, is do we want food or science for that? We're definitely not going to have any ocean nearby, or at least I don't plan on putting ocean nearby. Woodcutter technically could happen, but we might as well just go with something we're already building. So we're going to go ahead and get some science. That produces a free location, which if I hit the control key shows me, okay, so that's what I'm trying to make is a alchemist or whatever that was called herbalist. And it also shows me what exactly I have in these things, just because like a lot of them end up looking the same. So we still need to plant our food booster here. We still don't have enough, uh, enough biodiversity. That gives us three because we have three different bioticum in this biome. And so now we can place this four three here and it's going to get that 50% boost plus two sets out of four of the plus 15 due to adjacent bioticum, what with the blueberries and the blue beads, all of which are being buffed by the botanist, um, I guess, spirit? It's kind of weird. We've actually gotten a level two request done in just four items. That's good. And that came with the draft charge. Technically speaking, the first level that we would have completed would have given us a draft charge but since we're in um, technically challenge mode or horizon draft they picked those out for us ahead of time at the start of the match and so our first uh, draft charge gets burned so now we can take a look at this we already have one technically set into taiga and my guess is that I am eventually going to need to build some oceans so we're going to take an ocean Pearls is great at getting wealth. Um, I think we're just going to take that. Now we have a Nomad charge from earlier. We can go ahead and set this up. If we know that we need money for the end game, we might as well take this, the Merchant here. Sage is okay too, and it's not like technically I'm shoehorned into taking the Merchant. It's just that he's better suited with his buildings to give me more money. And here we will probably, I'm guessing we're going to give him some forests. We're going to have to do some. Since we took pearls, we'd like to have them be oceanside as well. And these you want to have at least be six. Simply because of how oceans work. Just take my word for it. And then let's go ahead and tell this guy to settle right here. It's going to take a while to get here, so we're just going to fast forward it all right so now that we're here get a mineral pearls is gonna take three but that's probably fine honestly because we can just put a gate here Jasper there. I did that with the same giant, so it wasted a ton of time. This just requires an animal, so we can go ahead and put a sea crate there.
What am I trying to do? I usually get lost in these menus a little bit, so I apologize. And pearls want to be as close to land as possible, like on the shore. So if adjacent to the coast, they gain plus 60. And so that's going to give us a ton of money. We can see right here that all that is basically being accumulated and counted in real time. As we go up in levels, like we are currently at well 6, now we're at well 7, the amount that everything cost goes up. The first 5 levels is 20, next 5 levels is 25, so on so forth. Which is another reason why having multiple cities is easier for score, because eventually we're going to need like 80 in order to get this to move at all. Otherwise... A city starts at one of everything, so you technically get three prosperity or points per city. And then you uh, start with ten, just due to the city itself. And then uh, these will accrue. This is your rewards. Every, well, eight population, then every twelve population will give us access to an emblem which is a specific buff that we can put on any bioticum of a tier. For instance, this is tier 1 only. We only have tier 1s at the moment, or we can only place them. And then eventually you'll get tier 2 and then tier 3s. If you get 5 inventions, and then after that every 10, then um, or 5, uh, sorry, technology, then you will make an invention. And then with that we are able to gain bonus stats and then also trade with other people. For instance, we have a trade route here. Um, the botanist has already made vodka, probably from the potatoes that we planted. So what you place next to your cities is also somewhat important. And we use our free trade route to snag that from him because who doesn't like plus one uh, population and plus one wealth? Why not? So, all three of these are kind of important at building a, like, a good city. <laughs> but uh, they're just a little bit indirect in how they affect that. Anyways, we have a third... Uh, not sure how I like these at all. And what we're probably going to do here, we could sit on this, but using the city actually gives us more era to use. I think we're actually just going to extend this taiga out to the end here. Besides, taigas like to technically be larger because it allows us to manipulate their rugged stat, which is specific to taigas. Basically, the more dangerous or uh, minerally, we'll say, mountainous this uh this biome is will gain rugged which is checked by certain bioticum in this area and let's get the miner settled and we'll just fast forward to him uh finishing up or while they they're doing that i believe that this pauses uh, let's get an extra taiga since we have two people there and we want access to science um, Not looking like that's gonna happen The white birch is technically good for science for us and allows us to use birds in order to apply lost Which is good for some science uh, stuff Then again, we don't need science. We need wealth. Hmm. So I guess we take silver has some science in there. That's kind of nice. I guess we'll take silver. And we won't be able to play with that until the second age. Again, noting that we are currently at age zero or the prehistoric age. We should be able to finish this up quickly and then we'll be able to move on and then show you guys in the next age. Oh, you went in here, huh? I 
because I'm doing something like this. Plant. Then we just need to place another mineral to satisfy you. I would honestly like to put that here. Adjacent to at least one undergrowth. Also has lost. I can deal with that. So you have an extra five to work with. That's something that we could just put in here. Let's give me this guy. And then put down a clownfish simply because it synergizes with sea and enemy. We're eventually going to get rid of that anyways. Uh, these also provide mystery. Mystery is a special resource that's generally created by ocean, but can occur in other places. And each person uses mystery differently. So for example, the miner here, if we go to mystery... Thanks. I thought that that was there. Let's go ahead and take a look. Collection. Spirits and projects. Miner. He gets five signs and two gold per mystery within his borders. Alright. So we are pretty much good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at our merchant. See what we have access to here. He can get money, more money, if there are three ocean minerals within borders. I think we already have that, so we might as well just get more money. And now we have satisfied their two, tier two requirement. In fact, they're still popping off over there. Um, you're honestly give me stone cutter. We should probably put that many element there. We already have a little bit. But the miner wants to also pivot into some wealth, which we'll be able to help him out with that later. Anyways, end of the era. So now we get to choose which era that we're moving towards, assuming, of course, that the challenge of the day or week has not told us explicitly you're going to this one, which our Act 3 has to go to Age of Horror. So, we get to choose exactly what we want to do here, and I think Monument Age is probably the best setup for us right now, because it's skewing us into building a good economy, Blah. building a good economy, which we're already looking at doing anyways, and it also constructs a special monument project, which um, gives him more gold. And if he's going to end up being uh, the target for Age of Horror, that uh, this is going to be appreciated. It also gives us 10 error limit on the next age if we get two stars on it and one upgrade points, which again, we will talk about in the second age. So as far as we're concerned, the first age is exactly the same as the prehistoric age. We just got a little uh, required quest to do, which gives us stars which technically count as our secondary batch of points. And now we need two element biotica. Do we have one? That's a gem. That's a gem. That's a gem. Okay, we gotta figure this out. That's an element, so we can utilize that. Otherwise, I honestly think that I want to use a research here. So the best way to get access to that is another draft charge, which we can get just by giving you another technology and wealth and four more minerals within borders, which honestly should be pretty easy. Especially since you've gone all the way out here. I'm going to give you all the good stuff from Taiga.
that has the bonus because it's next to a location that, uh, I guess we actually don't want to do that. Let's see if we can't get a plant. That seems decent. You can go ahead and replace that. If you replace any Bioticum, it only costs you one era. So you can use that to squeeze a whole or shift like five Bioticum instead of just building a new one. Oftentimes, especially when you get to um, get later text by using your drafts, then you get something that's just significantly better than the stuff that you start with. So you can just go back, replace all of it if you want. Unfortunately, we have a lot of food here, so we're losing a lot of our um, rugged, but we can get that back by placing minerals, which we were planning on doing anyways. This has base, it, this does not have base science. I can't put stone there unless I put something else next to this that has base science, like a plant. That is, um, kind of embarrassing, because I technically get more out of this blue bead, and also get to synergize the Rowan. So yet again, we are stomping the stone and moving it. That is not very efficient. But again, it's only technically counting us uh, the ability to place one uh, Bioticum, and also technically speaking, that's not even true. Are you not an undergrowth? Bruh. Bruh. Shouldn't really surprise anybody. Anybody who watches this channel knows that I am unable to think and talk at the same time. Well, it synergizes with itself, so get screwed. Okay. So now we have our draft. We're going to look at a forest. And we need element. Tin is an element, and so is antimony. So this will allow us to appease our current goal. And then we also get white willow, which uh, stacks with trees, which are quite prevalent in this biome. So if we can manage to get this guy to come all the way over here, we can also technically like turn this into forest right here, get him in on it. We might actually end up doing that because him having all the trees is going to be very useful for us. And we don't want this. We want elements. For each that has a base science yield, huh? Up to two. Need more biodiversity? Of course we do. Just need to put a plant here to boost the tin. Just be doing something silly like that. Not necessarily doing good for our uh, money front. In fact, I wonder how we lost. Thank you. Must have been moving the borders, technically reappropriated his funds, and then he got them back. Happens sometimes. So now the merchant just needs to have 40 total prosperity in order for us to get three stars on the monument age. He's currently at 24, so we have some work to do. We'll go to that one later, though. Actually, our second era is almost over. Hmm. Possibly spent a little much over there. Again, we can buy stuff, so it's not necessarily that we've scuffed ourselves. But uh, we're certainly in a predicament if we want to get nine stars on this match.
I gotta think about what would be the best, like, boosters for him. Unfortunately, he's not really on the correct areas for him to, like, want certain things. Blueberries is technically the same as Rabbit, if in that position. Oh boy, oh. You've really done it now. Alright, I'm going to cut to when I figure out what I'm going to do here. Alright, I think I got it. So... One thing that I forgot for just a moment was actually that he has an extra eight due to having completed requests. I do not think that we're going to be able to complete another request for plus 10 here, which would obviously give it to us. Uh, likelihood of that happening is very small, because getting to 25 wealth is no small feat, and you're supposed to do it in the third age. So, um, us trying to get this done in the first age is kind of wacko. However, comma... We do have the construction site for the pyramid, which gives him 30 gold per each tribe that has less prosperity than he does. If we make a new tribe, not only does that help with our score, but that also creates a tribe that is obviously worse than he is. Otherwise, we've already maxed out his merchant pier. We can't get more out of this, and we could technically put some mysteries in the borders, but we're not going to get an extra eight easily without going after our weak points at this point. So I think we're going to buy a new city. And then we're probably gonna have to put them like right here. We're gonna have to end up using a lot of crevices here to increase our land because it's gonna get quite cramped. In fact, I would almost prefer to have this new city well I mean do we not want them in a forest isn't very good for money I think that we can go ahead like I don't want to use four biomes but I'm thinking that that might be the plan go ahead create some rainforest here that way, um, botanists can go into the rainforest. Okay. So now we need to get, uh, five population. We're going to go ahead and get one for free just by being here. We're taking the Huntress because um, Pirate Queen really loves being next to the ocean and we've kind of already taken that unless we want to make another ocean which would take even more space. So that gave us one population for free because obviously they have one of everything and we just got to get you to gain one population preferably with one move which is just 10 food that's pretty easy actually uh, except for exactly how we got to go about that. A guinea pig will do it. Screw it. So that's going to give us five, which is going to give us access to a crevice. And we want to plant that sucker like right here. Crevices are tools that we use to increase the amount of land that we have. So long as you don't put it in city borders, you get four new tiles or patches and technically the space between borders is not in city borders so quite helpful so now we have access to more rainforest here i don't think that we want this all to be rainforest though so let's just grab a couple more patches of that and we're probably gonna have to use another another crevice soon like right here possibly right here just so that everybody has room to grow. Anyways, what are we looking at now? Uh, we can go ahead and spend... On a terraform, 
I don't think that that's technically the best idea right now. Uh, but we still need Aeon to place things. Generally speaking, I personally use my science to grab free Aeon. And it scales everything else up. So we can now place two more things. And what we're probably going to have to do is, do we have any good trees? We could utilize some good trees here. Each adjacent tree, adjacent tree. Like, not really. Blueberry, blackberry. It'd be three spaces away. You want this? You should have it. Click, 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 click. Okay, so I'm going to have to convince him that he wants it. That allows us to expand our borders by one, even if they don't want to. That helps a little bit. We're probably now going to have to use our wealth in order to put a herbivore here to boost that blackberry. Still not sure that this is the best idea. Can we do something with this? Like really the only reason that we have anything here is because it gets boosted by the, the animal pact. Suppose we could put down another blueberry here, replace this, then use the rest to place a rabbit here. And that would certainly fix us up a bit, because we'd get a little bit more. Actually, it's about the same. I don't think that this is going to do it. Plus 10. It's going to get a little bit more. Hmm. I think we're going to be just short. We won't be, actually. We'll be able to get by, but we definitely don't like spending this many resources on the first stage. I'm pretty sure I screwed something up as far as efficiency. Why am I looking here? I need to place this first, which... Blueberry's fine. Suppose I could actually do... It wouldn't give us anything. So no point. Rabbits are getting relocated. To here? So that's going to put us at 38. Next thing that we're going to do is buy microcharges. Microcharges stand for, I guess they're trying to say microorganisms, but the things aren't really micro at all. Uh, they're basically, you can see here that every biotica has a slot where we can put something else to buff it. I just got to make sure that we're using the right one here. This is 40% for a plant might be useful. This is um, adjacent to critters. That's not good for us. Each adjacent bioticum that has a base science yield. Antimony, moss stone. I guess 20% it's going to have to do. That's plus 50%. Plus 50% on this is 35. Okay. So you're our best one right now. Forest can add more food. And tag tree. That's very good if we're looking into placing our willow. Okay, this, this actually definitely turned out. We want to put this worm on the plant. Because the plant scales due to botanist spirit. Then... We want to put this woolly moth caterpillar on the antimony. And that alone 
does us. Okay, let's go to the next stage. We don't really need to fiddle with these things that we don't necessarily have to at the moment. And these are our rewards um, as per the previous screen. If we get a two star, then we gain access to uh, 10 more Aeon Limit. So every age we get 10, two more units to place. We get an upgrade points, which are now going to become relevant. We get a free draft charge. We get a free micro charge. And due to the amount of diversity, diverse biomes that we have, we're going to get plus nine points right there. Which is helpful. Alright, so. Apologies if you can hear baby downstairs. I think that we might go for the plague. Like, revolution's okay. It's just not necessarily good for us. This would allow us to buff people's score because the botanist isn't very good at cash. It gives us a way to add cash to them. It gives Miner a way to gain access to more science, which he's technically about. And then the merchant can get some more population. The problem is, is that if we miss, it's going to be quite terrible because at the end we got to get 18 on all those and then 175 total points on the planet. Um, screw it, we're gonna go hard. Everybody gets access to their age two projects as well. So long as they are city number two. Um, I really don't know if we actually have anything that provides base gold. Five to seven. One, two, three, four, Four. Do we feel like we're going to get more? Because this will technically give us more yields, but we also probably can more easily get four to six minerals within borders. Gems, not so much. I think we have one, two gems. Otherwise... These are just metals and elements. So, I almost think it's going to be easier. I think I'm actually going to take the market. We have ways. And that way is that we're going to upgrade this slot. So, one thing to note is that all these slots are level 1 slots. Level 1 slots cannot house if bits can press the right frickin' buttons. We have no tier 2s here. There we go. 2 star Biotica. They need to be in level 2 slots. So... In order to gain access to level 2 slots, we need to upgrade the slots, which will upgrade them to our current age. If we put something that is lower level, then it will gain a boost, 50% boost to their yields, additive with all other percentage bonuses. Um, these will disappear, however, their stats will remain permanently engrafted into the ground. So if we go ahead and do this... These slots will re-roll. We now got a mineral booster here. That's pretty dang good. And if we look here, legacy due to the blueberry, we're gonna have 52 here. Now this does not get uh, affected by any bonuses that we may place there. There are some biotica though that do scale legacies in their slots. Anyways, um, we're building stuffs. 
This needs to be next to a plant. So be it. And that gave us our five sources of income. We're going to need another draft in order to get access to a tier 2 plant, because I don't really feel like placing one that's tier 1 unless I absolutely have to. Because all these are suck. Actually, what is that beetle that you have? 20 food. Okay, so we're going to be able to turn these into trees, which not only allows them to scale off of, again, the White Willow, but also allows them to have another tag so that they generate even more food. So I think that that's a good idea. We'll honestly slap those down right now. I don't see any reason why we should hold on to these. They can only be used in the forest anyways. Unless, of course, we wanted to put those on these here, but they're still not plants, so they don't gain the bonus. And this is also going to help him get to his 18 required uh, population. Anyways. We are done here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the botanist. What does the botanist want to do? Um, eight plants within borders? Possible. Ocean? Not possible. Trees? Possible. Distinct plants within borders? Very possible. One, two, three, four... And then we need to crevice here anyways, which will require that much population. Then once we get to that point, then we can um, give you uh, some rainforest to work with. Because the Huntress was very rude and took the spot that I was hoping that you would grab. Regardless, I think that this is a good idea. Botanist really does good work with this, and it also gives a microcharge. This is specific to the botanist. It's just good. It's also possible, we do, uh, that we have enough stuff to make it work anyways. Us putting all this food down is definitely bringing down the ruggedness of this terrain. That's how I feel about that. And I honestly think that you're good for now. Let's go over here, look at this project. We need to give you science. Each science in the highest metal buy out of them. Tin is metal, right? Do we have... It does not look like we have a mineral booster. Check to make sure that there's not one just sitting under one of these here. Hmm. Those are generally not good anyways compared to the other options, but sometimes they're exceptionally good. Uh, three to five elements in borders. That is exceptionally good for us. I think we almost actually have that done already. Go ahead and check. We need one more element. Okay. Is Pearl an element? I don't see why it would be. It's not. Just throw a bedrock here for now. Really wouldn't do anything for us though. Doesn't feel worth the, the Aeon. Screw it. 
get that boost for now. Okay, now these guys have enough money to actually trade because we had placed that. And so they're getting vodka from Lushwood Port as well. Or from Lushborough. Which gives him even more population and, uh, well, same as we were getting before from this stuff. He has invented primitive tools, which gives him one uh, technology, and modest earrings, which gives him one economy. So we gotta make you make money. Unfortunately, you're here for each science in adjacent biotica. Each science. Tin is pretty good science. I suppose we could hoover up these guys. Get rid of these carrots, but leave the food in the ground. And then we can place sulfur and uh, silver, which is a way to scale what we got going on here. So, I'm actually going to... Pick another one of these. And if we're going to bury some carrots, we might as well bury something that's worthwhile. I'll put some food in there. Again, not really our best place for that. But uh, might as well get those stats in the ground. You usually don't run into like good scaling until you get like specific tier 2 bioticum or, or tier 3 bioticum. So... Whatever's clever as far as I'm concerned. At least this is going to be by the tin, which is exceptionally helpful for us. And no ammo is going to give us access to uh, science, so we will not. And now we need to get our predators here, which is good for us because those usually give us access to money. Coming over here, hopefully he gets those modest earrings to give himself a boost in wealth. Oh, you're on your way. I hate that this always uh, undoes the 2x speed if uh, any sort of cutscene plays. I really don't care to have this in effect. Oh, you were coming back. I was like, how are you inventing something? Anyways, how can we get the botanist to 18? Pretty rough. What are we scaling here? We still need distinct plants, which is going to be hard. Gems is how we get um, gold due to Fort Fantastic. Brother, we ain't got no gems. Like, I can just put gems down, sure. Do I really not have a gate planted? Not here, at least. Huh. I mean, why as well? And then how are we going to get a distinct plant? That's a good question. Uh, we really need more land, is what it is. We have enough population now to buy another crevice. So let's go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and put that there. Too bad we don't have two good plants next to each other. I think we're still going to do it though. We're going to go ahead and buy a terraform charge. This allows us to do something special to the land, depending on which class of giant we use it on. Our plant giants can create a creek, which uh, causes plants on both sides to gain 50% on all yields and give biodiversity, which allows you to get away with uh, having technically smaller biomes. Uh, we're not technically using it for that. We're 
probably going to pump a lot into this area, and as such, we want to have access to more diversity, which, if we flatten these, they will take that biodiversity bonus with them. Um, it's actually quite good. And then I need to decide what exactly we want to do here. Um, is it better for me to put the merchant emblem on the silver itself? Or is it better for me to put it on the sulfur? Because the sulfur is going to scale and also consequently scales this by 60%. Um, we're going to... Oh, these are tier 2s. This is a tier 1. We cannot do any of that. None of that at all. Um, maybe the tin then. Yeah, probably the tin. Well, actually, we... Miner already has their signs, to be honest. You've invented another thing. You now have access to brimstone, which is two to ten mystery. Let's go. Well, that kind of ruined my whole project. But wait, you have Wooly Caterpillar. Each thing that has base science. One? No, that's bo boosted. My bad. You have base science. You have base science. So this is going to be plus 50% on this bad boy. And if we replace Rowan with something, we can boost that even further. Alright, feeling good about that. How much money are you at? You're at 14. We still gotta make you, uh, hella expensive. I think we're pretty much done with all this here. Let's turn this into Rainforest. And at Rainforest, we can have access to more gems, and we can access have access to more distinct plants, which is what we want to have this man be happy. Um, both of these seem pretty good to me. Just watching the Aeon at the top, you got this for free, I appreciate that. So you need one more distinct plant, correct? Yes. And you've already grabbed this, thank goodness. We don't have anything to give you though. So let's grab some rainforest. That ain't no plan. I guess we're taking banana because reasons. Oh boy oh. Alright. Otherwise this stuff scales with trees. We have trees already here in the rainforest. It's not too bad. Scales off of biodiversity. Decent yields. Parakeet at least uh, gives us money, which is currently what we're looking for. Um, I almost think the Scarlet Macaw is better for that, though. Problem is, it doesn't come with any trees. And I need a distinct plant. F it, we ball. We've already made our life difficult. Might as well keep going. And so... Give me the macaw. Macaw, macaw, da bang, da bang, diggy, diggy. And here we go. Just checking how many patches are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Decent. Plus 50%. I'll take it. Or... Nah.
If I can get you up one population, a guinea pig will do that. You are about to get farmed for street cred. Two to three distinct animals within borders. Sounds good. I think I want you to actually get money though. spend 10 wealth to gain access to a draft charge, bring us back to the rainforest. We need a plant. Cassava, each surplus diversity. Not bad. Also has access to a gem, plus hella money if unique in the biome, and jungle fowl is pretty good for um, what's her face. I've already forgotten her name. Jade Ritual is also pretty dang good. Triple yields, which makes you good for a flat money if we ever get access to it. And uh, 15 for each distinct plants in the biome, which we're also trying to kind of do. And we're gonna need to get this rubber tree in place as well, which is probably gonna make us have to flatten the macaw that we just spent biodiversity on, but we'll do it. I don't think we will. I could also see Kaiman popping off. We'll go with Jade though. So we want to flatten this. Works for me. Put some extra stuff down then. That might be perfect placement. Now that's probably where we're gonna put our jade, isn't it? Yeah, that's technically where we wanna put our jade. It's where we would wanna put the rubber tree. Suppose we could always put another plant out there. He has 18, now we just gotta get the merchant to 18 people. And we're running a little low on Aeon to do that. We gotta somehow boost population by six. Have you, you have t made stew. Vodka and tools. Pretty good. How are we going to get more food in this location, though? It's not going to be from minerals, that's for sure. It's not going to be anything. Unless we just start <laughs> planting blackberries, as far as the eye can see. Um... Agave isn't even particularly good. We're kind of scuffed. What did we do here? Oh, we got sun coral. That doesn't give food. If not if it's adjacent to an expanse. We technically put that here, but we wouldn't be able to plant the sun coral. We are in a way. You make money. We're in this blender again, it seems. Let's 
dicey, but we'll grab another draft, put it in the rainforest. You're in a normal forest. Good thing we checked. And we need money, but you suck at making money. Spinel will take us there. Sandstone won't. Feldspar might help us. Oh wait, no, we need food. Okay. Cherry tree is great then, as is red deer. All fruit and flower plants and biome gain 25 food. Never mind. Yep. I think that's it. Fruit. Fruit. We don't really have any flowers in place yet. This is already a tier two, so let's go ahead and utilize that. And it has plus one micro slots, so that's pretty good. If adjacent to at least two biotocum types, if we place this here, that'll do that. I'm willing to squash a rabbit in Minecraft. Um, intimate knee already has something. Might as well keep this. Alright. Got nothing good to give you. Except... Yeah. Crew will help with your money. We'll put that in the pearls, I think. That's basically like an 80% boost, as far as it's concerned. Alright. Excuse me. Guess we'll put some mystery on them. Mysterious rabbits that will be dug up in the future. So sorry. All right. I'll need to buy another placement. Probably give you a flag, but we'll see if that's actually requ required. Go ahead, grab that. Jason to at least one gem. Not happening. Sorry, buddy. We could put down a mineral and that would still suffice. But it's also not really good for us. Hoi. We can't put down a plant because then you won't uh, benefit from that. So I guess we're just putting down some rabbits. More rabbits. You're coming here by yourself. I like that. Should be a ton of food. Is it enough? Yes. Error complete because we already had enough points. All right, let's stop spending our resources and just call it a day. The one thing I hate most about this game is that I cannot skip these cutscenes or times three them if I already have placed fa fast forward. Like, I don't need to see this hellaciously long covered up already by the foreground cutscene every single time. You can barely see them heave the rocks at them at snail speed.
Well, it's time to get horrified, people. That's a lot of diversity. Okay. So we have to take Age of Horror. It seems like I'm also able to take Calm Era if I want, which has no modifiers at all, but also doesn't have any positive modifiers. Not about it. Uh, botanist is actually choosing to go towards gold. I guess he's the richest man alive? Yes, he is. Okay, well, he should be able to get Dark Gift pretty easily. It's already racking in, giving him more gold. Uh, each fruit. Usually Jam Maker's pretty good for his uh, Tier 3, but I'm not sure that we have... Like, we've got Blackberries. This is Medicinal. Which is something to note. This has fruit. So we get 1.2 per each science in medicinal. <coughs> or our best tree, which is currently... Um, this rubber tree, which would give us a hundred, that's really not fantastic. So, fruit is one, two, three. We have three fruits. And since it's per. We're kind of scuffed. I almost think 100 science is better than all that. Really sucks that you actually ended up getting more money than the merchant. Which is my fault. Because now we gotta scale money here. Hopefully you invent something cool. That makes you like a lot of money. We also have access to the cultist kit, which uh, want distinct dark offering biotica within borders, which I am pretty sure that this, uh, that rabbit is a dark offering. Sulfur is honestly surprised that silver isn't. But he also has the project, which is not currently active, but will give us quite a bit of Okay, no, we got the full payout. Never mind me. So how do I make you rich? By putting plants in this biome. Understood. I kind of want to force you out a bit. We have a draft probably going to have to be rainforest, to be honest. We need to make money. Arc money. Jaguar, 25 for each surplus biodiversity and 5% for each distinct biotica in this biome. That could work. That could work. We also get access to Onyx, which is a dark offering, and helps further that agenda. If adjacent to at least one harmony... We should be able to fit one there. I don't know what it is. Coffee is a dark offering. Hold up. What? I'm going with Jaguar because it's going to help us out. Jaguar, unfortunately, is a T6 or a 6 cost tier 3 and that's going to make it kind of hard to actually place but at least when we place it we're going to also want to place this onyx next to it which is also going to give it some uh some own we need to get a harmony nearby though that's probably going to have to go in the slot all right so we're going to boost this Now we're going to place this for free. Doesn't matter where it is, so we might as well place it here. And the Jaguar. 
And now we got a bump biodiversity in this biome, which quite frankly is pretty easy. No. No. Bro. Oh, now you, now you see it. Well, it's too late. It's hers now. This was eight levels in frickin' wealth, and you couldn't see it. She was closer anyway. She would have gotten it, even if we would have given him the charge. He just needed to know that there was good stuff over here. Meanwhile, she's like, I have no land, and I'm a scream. <sighs> that was our entire frickin' strategy, bro. Fucking slow cultist ass. I think it's time to flatten these. We can put the Jade Ritual back. It'll get another 50%, which actually isn't good for us. We gotta find out what has Harmony, though. It's kind of the most important thing at the moment. That doesn't have Harmony. We may not have anything that has Harmony associated with it. We don't. Okay. We need more research. And I think our run just got scuffed. So now I'm looking at uh, city requests, which will give us access to more... Like, technically, we're almost at 30 here. We could grab this. I don't know if that's the best move. We need two more population for another crevice. Yeah, I think we're scuffed. Because if he doesn't get to his requirements, it's uh, not going to matter. I do think that we have 120 wealth on the planet, or at least close to it. We have 10 here. I know Merchant has 20. You have 25, so 35 total so far. And you picked up all that shit, so you're actually at... Uh, 50, and then 20. You have 70. That's kind of a huge oof. Alright, well, time to start looking at these bad boys. Tier 2, upgrade for every patch in this biome. We had something that we wanted to do that to. It's not this onyx. It's not that. Was it over here? Silver. Where is it? The sulfur. Oh, silver already has woolly math. Okay, so it's the sulfur. We're going to buff this by 60%. God damn, dude. We, we really screwed up. I think the easiest thing to do would be uh, give Huntress Village enough food. Bonus if adjacent to a mineral. Well, guess what? You need a level 2 slot? We'll make that happen. <coughs> Just kidding, we can't. That's not even good to boost if adjacent to an animal. I need to get the harmony, man. Go ahead, just keep landing these shrimp in random uh, aquatic areas.
Well, I'll tell you guys what, me um, trying to save this run for an hour and a half probably isn't good. It's probably actually going to be closer to like half an hour, maybe an hour. So I'm probably going to just cut to the end <clears throat> and uh, pretty much show you guys what I did. And you guys can see the ending of the game and uh, we'll give our uh, farewells. There we go. Oh. So we managed to get botanist his money. Now we gotta worry about making everybody else money. Which is thankfully easier than making him more money. We only have to make 20 more money and get a total of uh, 20 of this stuff on the planet. Which is uh, crewed by collecting more dark gifts. And I believe you, aren't you should have more there's not a third di distinct distinct being the word that's what it is because we put in labradorite and we have sulfur so if we were to put a rabbit here that would actually help us out uh we'll do that simply because it's the easiest way for us to do that as of this moment Plus, since there's food there, we also get a little bit of money out of it. Not exactly um, too big a deal. That would be very good if we were in the savanna, because there are some dark offerings there on some pretty good uh, herbivore beasts that give you tons of food. So, you've given us all that you can. It's time to go elsewhere. How many dark offerings do you have? Do you have a guinea pig? An onyx? You really only need one more distinct dark offering. So let's see if we even have access to such a thing. We've already placed onyx. Okay, so we legit can't do anything here unless we get another charge. How about you? What you got? How's Lychee not a uh, dark offering? Rabbit is? Okay. Just rabbit, huh? It's a shame. How about you over here? You have a rabbit. Hmm. Hmm. We gotta get everybody to have three distinct. It's gonna be rough. Well, let's go over to you and see if there's not anything that we can't place here to give you some. We could technically put a guinea pig here, and if you were to grab that, that'd be good for us. Are you backed up? You are not. Grab a flag and hope that you go to the right. There we go. So since you are going to own this anyways, now we can properly... Place something here, but I think that the only thing that will actually do it is the guinea pig. That's going to have to do. And I suppose we could put Labradorite, or Onyx even, if we want to use an upgrade. And then that'll take care of you. And then it'll actually be next to a Harmony, so it'll actually give you money. Which seems nice. So halt on the guinea pig. We need to upgrade this. It's not worth the Aeon at this point to lay stuff down just to get more stats on the field. Because the way that we're going to win is right here. Although I believe the end requires us to have 500 uh, Prosperity. 
it's going to be hard to get that. And I suppose now is a good time to talk about, um, like, difficulty of the game. Or, like, a lot of you guys are probably watching this and being like, oh man, that's a lot of min-maxing, that's not my kind of game. Well, uh, don't you worry, because honestly, you can play this game however the frick you like. And I mean that. You can go ahead and just vibe with it. You can try and get the nine stars, which requires you to get 500, which is... I'm not going to say that I'm, like, good at the game or anything, but I'm at least, you know, moderately able to pilot it. So, I'm able to get 500 usually most of the time. I usually have to, like, milk out an extra 50, and sometimes that means that I end up less, sometimes that means that I end up a little bit more. I've accidentally gotten up to 800 points, and can semi-reliably get up to, like, 600-700 points. Um, like, those extra 200 points are really something, and I'm not saying that I'm great at the game, mostly because I've seen online that somebody got 1,100 points, and that is absurd. But, due to the puzzle nature of the game, I'm pretty sure that you can just make that kind of stuff happen. You need to make money. The gem by Otakman boards with the highest gold. Um, it'll be a lot easier just to make you top out Ocean Bioticum, and that gives us more prosperity too. I suppose it's going to cost us, right, because we've got to place some Ocean Bioticum when we have nothing to place. We've got another upgrade, so let's go ahead and put some good stuff down. I don't know if we actually have any distinct fish available. We've got the clownfish, which is a fish, but otherwise this shark looks like a bait, to be honest. We probably want to put down the mahi-mahi. The shark is a dark offering, though. Hold up. Hold up. And we're gonna put down another fish. We could put down the sucker fish and these herring. And that would add more fish to the pot. Think I'm about it. Go ahead, put you right here. You're gonna get maxed out and you're legitimately just here to beat the shark. Where's my blood offering? You haven't traded and gained cultist kit yet. Okay, well let's hope that that, uh... You're going to get another trade route. You need to go to the right. Please. Don't be the third person who's failed me today. Okay, I guess while we wait for him to decide who he wants to trade with. Um, yeah, so I generally easily get around 500, unless it's, like, close. I really don't care to, like, grind out the additional, like, if I'm at 400 trying to get 100 points at the end of the game, it's absolutely hellacious. Can you please just trade for Cultist Kit? He's only all the way over here. You literally have nothing better to do. Maybe if I give you enough science, he'll come over here. 
I don't freaking know, man. Uh, but yeah, I don't find it fun to, like, go for, like, the highest possible score. I just want to get a decent score, which, in as far as the game is concerned, is 500. If, again, I'm close to, like, say, 700, 800, yeah, I'll, I'll go for that, too. Like, doesn't really mind me none. How am I going to get you to get science, though? Kind of a predicament. You can squash these, but you're currently buffing your own onyx here. We don't really have anything here or here to give you science. Damn. That suck. But yeah, it's a fun, puzzly game to think over, and it has good vibes. That's all that matters to me, really. Do you have the dark gift? No, you don't. Come on, man. We have the wealth. We just need you guys to actually want to contribute. So we can make a very beefy food. Something bigger than 15. Do we have black bear here? We do not. We have no beefy food. Hey, we need to look for a beefy food. You have Dark Offering, too. It's probably you. We can build Black Bear, but since it's not a Dark Offering, it doesn't matter. Each undergrowth in this uh, biome, we have quite a bit. I'm going to choose to believe the Mufalon. Plus, Mufalon is a Tier 2, so it's going to get a bonus, which is always nice. We need to keep the Labradorite out. But if I squash this, then you're not going to have two Critter Biotica nearby. This is our Tier 3. We don't do anything with this or this. That's kind of important. Suppose I could drop this. This is possible. And then we can put down this nephrite, which will make more money by the silver, which will buff the platinum. Why do you have to go put the food booster there? Why didn't you just put the bonnie in the box? But one thing that we're going to do is we're going to use another crevice here. It's less impactful because it's in city borders. This allows us to get more distance for the nephrite and also help out by placing some more, like, juicy uh, undergrowth for the Mouflon. Since he's not going to be able to get this juicy little node right here. I suppose we technically could still do that. It's just not going to benefit our silver. Yeah, probably our best bet is actually to just put the move on here. So now we're at 390. Do we have any scalers out there in our micros? That's science. We don't want that. Um, both of these are pretty dang good. 
We have now achieved the blood cost. So now we just need to get relative uh, prosperity on the planet. And we only have uh, 10 more Aeon. gonna be another brain bender. I don't think we're getting there without a uh, city of gold here. I don't really want to use this here even though that's our best scaler because everyone else is like just flat food. Pretty distinct plants within borders. I don't even think that you're good for that. Distinct animals within borders. You're not even good for that either. We got stoats. We got rabbit. We got this burb right here. And the Mouflon. Suppose we could put down a caribou or a palace cat. How much food are you at? Why are we why are we milking? You're still gaining money. I love it. Maybe buffing the Mouflon is worth it, because it's probably gonna give us like another I want it to say huge amount. Well, it's going to be buffed by 100%. And we could theoretically... Bring it up to 120, 240. 240, that not only gets us food, but also gold. Yeah, I think this is good. So we just need to make two more distinct animals. Which is kind of our limit. Good lord. We're really doing it. Let's try to look at that later. Uh, we have all of our distinct fish that we could possibly set here. Unless we start replacing this stuff. Which would require us to get another draft. Um, why don't you buff yourself? Ao, Ao, for each adjacent critter. You are not technically a critter. You are. You are. You're not. So technically speaking, you would gain the most out of this. And you have low population anyway, so you actually have a lot to gain here. Can sharks only be placed in the deep? No, we could replace something with this. One of our double bedrocks. Because how many charges are we getting here? This is worth 150 over 400. And it's going to hit your two worst stats. That really is a way to gain some uh, easy points. The problem is, is that we do not have the uh, requirement. Because each time that you use an Apex uh, Bioticum, its cost goes up. Not good. Really is a shame. Did you roll here? Plus food. Seems like a bit of bait on those two. Where are we looking at with uh, the Mouflon that we already buffed? It already had 100% buff. That's probably the right move. We could put another Mouflon.
I mean, there's really no reason not to. Besides the fact that it's not going to give us as much earned because we're already at 30 over here. What about a jaguar here? Hmm. Get a little bit more science. You should be popped off on science. I guess it'll give you a prosperity versus... It'll actually help you a little bit more. Do you have anything that's giving you percentages? Technically, this is. Seems like it might be the best location for that. You don't need this. You really don't need this. So we could flatten those and give you something new. Like, um... Your own Mouflon? Yeah, because that's not a, uh... I'm not against that. How much is it going to cost us? Not much. I'll probably cut again to the end here. As, like I said, I don't think that this is very much of a spectacle watching me try to min-max another 80 points here. Oh my good lord, that's food though. Let's go. Yeah, I think unfortunately I'm going to have to call it there. I've used just about all of my resources here. Like I could put a mountain or another stream or something. That's not going to give me enough to actually like do anything. Otherwise, I mean, I te guess it technically could have done something for me. I could have put... Um, a sanctuary here which doubles the amount of uh, micro slots that they have and then I could use twice as many or double up anything that I put on it that might have been able to get you close to another nah, like you'd be close but I don't think that we'd be able to get you there with that um yeah like we technically have a lot of slots here but these aren't going to go on anything particularly interesting due to the fact that uh everything that's good we've already technically tagged something on it and then got these later which is unfortunate or um yeah anyways um like i said generally speaking i don't get this low of a score so it's a little upsetting to me but I also know that we are having difficulties in the first era, like completing the first era, which is usually a sign. I likely wasn't paying as much attention because I'm trying to talk at the same time. Possibly what might be better is for me to do a recording and then voice over it or commentate over it. But it's kind of hard to be in the same headspace. Uh... I would be able to cut it up at least and then just talk about the most important thing that's going on. If you got to this long in the video, first off, thank you very much for watching this long into the video. Secondly, if you have any feedback whatsoever, be it questions, comments, concerns, misplay alerts, uh, how you would possibly like to see this game played, by all means, just go ahead and put that down in the comments below. Maybe I gotta reduce it down to a single act and just do Horizon from there. It doesn't seem like that would be particularly intuitive, but at least it would be building up on my early game knowledge and end up being helpful in that regard. And significantly reduce the, the duration of the game. I'd still be able to explain, uh, make comments about like, oh, since I have this and this, we're able to get this out of it. Um, yeah. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and catch you guys around.